Hey music fans, as a roadie I had this great opportunity to tour with all these bands. I wrote a book about my experiences on the road and it was the number one new release on Amazon and Bios and it's now sold millions of copies on Kindle. I'm Joel Roadie and this is my podcast, Party Like a Rockstar. with a, a band that's a little bit different again out of japan though have we heard of a band called one okay rock no this is a special one for me because not only did i work for stone temple pilots i'm a big fan of the band when i began to work for stp it was my first gig steve was the manager and so uh, i always remember him fondly he was cool man he was always nice to me and i was the bottom guy on the totem pole and he was of course the top dude and so it's good to reconnect with people. Anyway, I did reconnect with him recently. I asked him if he wanted to come on the podcast. He was all into it. And I hope you guys like his reactions. He's a really cool cat. He's a good dude for real. Some of these went a little longer. I like people to get to know the guests a little bit. I think it makes it more fun. I went a little bit, a little bit deeper than usual maybe because uh, some of the stuff intrigued me. I wanted to know about STP's... Uh, origins and whatnot and so uh if you're stp fans it's great if not i put chapters there and you guys can skip through the stuff if you're just not interested and you just want to see the straight reaction you can still do so either way i hope you enjoy it i also want to throw a shout out a thank you to the people here at not just tokyo treat but their sister company sakura you can uh, find tokyo treat products at tokyotreat.com or sakura products at sakura.com CO. They always think of me and they send me all these wonderful treats and why I like it is it's just different stuff for my palate. It's different things for me to try and they include tea by the way. I'm a big tea drinker. I love tea and so it means a lot to me that they would not send me one box but two <laughs> to try all this wonderful stuff. So thank you very very much for thinking of me. Guys let's jump into this. Let's see what Steve Stewart, it's so cool for me to have this guy on, thinks about your favorite band. Let's do this. So this is the band One OK Rock. I'm pretty new to them. And somebody said, you always pick the same song for your guests. It's true. I have been. So I just want to address it. It's because I'm not familiar with the majority of their catalog. I've been starting to explore it. However, this is still the favorite one for me. <laughs> and it's actually a new release of theirs. It's only been around for a few months. So uh, or there you go. 2023 is when they performed it. So you can let me know what you think. It's a track called Make It Out Alive.
More up your alley? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely Americanized, right? I I like the song. I thought they were rocking. It was uh, it was swinging a little bit in there, right? That that little which is pretty cool and uh, super commanding stage presence. I thought I thought the singer was amazing. Um, yeah, those guys are playing with their hearts, and, and it seems uh, the crowd was way into it. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, I like he's got a little bit of a gravelly voice. He's got amazing stage presence. It's it's really something. He's really good. The guitar player with all the, the stepping across the stage, he's cruising around. All of the backing vocals fit nicely. Great hook. Um, yep. It's good stuff, I think. so. They own the stage. Yeah, like you said, the presence was great, and they played with conviction, and it was – it was – it wasn't overdone right that I, it, I didn't feel like there was way too much production or anything just for you know just for showing off it was it was really for the song and it, and it oh, worked yeah. all right so questions so I'm, this is stuff i don't know so i'm intrigued Jen, on, to see what you this when was the first time you met the guys in stp where were you and then were they performing what was your thoughts that you, you were in a band i remember you saying you played an instrument in a band I was in a band called Situations Normal. I played drums, and my lead singer, Jim Heimbach, was best friends with Scott Weiland. So we grew up in Santa Ana. They kind of grew up. They were in the Huntington Beach area. Scott went to Huntington Beach High School um, called Edison, and they knew each other socially, and they'd come to our rehearsals. We would hang out with them. Um, so I knew them, and there was a couple of different iterations. They started out... Um, actually a band called Swing and then they were called Swat Assault and then they were called Mighty Joe Young so a couple of the players switched on and off um, but we play gigs with them at places down in Orange County and and you know in, in this local area so I'd known them for since I was in high school since right like 18 or 19 and so Kretzel, Kretzel San Francisco right he was born in Santa Clara and he ended up living. He's a house up there. I don't know if he still has it, but um, yeah, but they were based kind of in Orange County and and, and the DeLeo brothers are from New Jersey originally, but they were, uh, Dean was in San Diego. Robert was kind of in the Huntington, Long Beach area for a minute. And Did all you of them were kind drums? of in this, pardon Did me? You play drums with them? <laughs> I, I only played drums with them on stage in florida at a show one night because uh they they asked me to it was weird they, they actually wanted me to play i think it was at the, what was the ballroom called in new york um roseland roseland right and they go steve you got to come up and play uh you know you got to play sex type thing and i'm like i'm not gonna play with you guys in new york because it was every every label executive and every you know everybody from the press whatever it was, it was a big show but we were in Tallahassee, Florida, I believe, at the University of Florida. Um, and I can't remember if it was it was Kretz for sure, the drummer. And I think it was Dean that was in on it. And they go, you got to you got to come up on the encore because they always did sex type thing for the encore. And um, so there's a part where they would break it down, just like kick drum going. Right. And so they go just, you know, Kretz is like, just be on the side of the stage and, and we'll switch out. So right when it got to that breakdown part was just kick, you know, quarter note kick drums, we switched and I just start doing quarter note kick drums and then it just keeps building. You might have been at this show, Joel. I don't, I don't remember. Um, and and I, Scott had no idea and I don't think Robert had any idea. So <laughs> we start getting into sex, you know, sex type things, a song that just keeps building and building and then we speed it up and it, whatever. And I remember... You know, Dean was looking at me, and, and then and then he kicks Robert, and Robert goes, he just like starts laughing. He taps Scott, and Scott turns around. And he's like, "Oh my god!" And we just we played that song for you know, I don't know, the last minute or two of that song, and uh, and then went out and took a bow. So that was the only time I ever played with those guys. I mean, there was our bands played together on you know, parties and, and local gigs, but um, I never played with their band except in Tallahassee. But you don't remember. The, the moment you met each guy? <clears throat> no, because I met them separately. Like Scott, I'm sure I met with our lead singer. I got a party somewhere. And then we probably went to one of their shows in Huntington or at Spats or Fender's Ballroom or somewhere. 
And then it was the Tubbs brothers, Scott and Lonnie Tubbs, Corey Hickok played guitar at some point. So it was, it was a group of people that were just kind of playing with each other's bands and coming in and out. Um, so there wasn't like some one, you know, sit down meeting where we all said, Hey, let's sit down until, until we start, you know, working together professionally. So um, we just kind of were in the same circles. Was Scott always, I mean, we could talk, we could, I could cut this or we could talk about it separately, but was he always difficult as I'm trying to think of a nice way to say, but was he always harder in the beginning? Was it easier? Listen, I don't even, difficult's not, I, I wouldn't even call him difficult. It's weird because, you know, I've dealt with quite a few artists. I mean, I, I would say over the years, I probably managed maybe 40 people. If you add them all together and all the bands, um, he's a lead singer. And and he's opinionated and he's got a strong presence. So in many ways, he was easier to work with than a lot of the other guys, right? He was the first guy to want to do press. He was the first guy up and the last guy to go to bed. I mean, that kind of thing where if I said, Scott, we got to do this morning show at 6 a.m. over in Chicago. Bam. No, no question. He's there. Right. The other guy is like, mm, I don't know if I want to do that morning show. So he's the work ethic and. And a lot of that is, you know, he he wanted that. He wanted his, to further his career. He, it was a fame yeah. thing. He was, you know, he, he was he was pushing, which is a good thing. And I think again, back to that work ethic. Do you want to make this? Do you want to build this, or do you want to like just take it easy? And and he was not a take it easy kind of guy. So, yeah, people could say he was demanding, and there was difficulty. But I, I don't. I never looked at it quite like that. Was was he hard to deal with? At times, of course, and, and many people are. So it, it wasn't, I wouldn't single him out for that because the, as many times as you would say he was quote unquote difficult, he was he was the first person to show up, like I said, and the last person to be there. And, and some of the videos, the first couple of videos, for example, you know, I mean, I was up with them till two or three in the morning. The other guys were like, we're going to go back to the hotel. They were done shooting, but they could have hung out, but they were like, we're going to go to sleep because we're going to wake up in the morning. And Scott's like, what's next, right? What's the next shot? Let's get it done. And, and you're up in the Seattle rain at, you know, three in the morning. Um, he was, he was going for it. So yeah, I, I would not characterize him as difficult. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's, there was elements of him not being around. Right. And, and, and when he got deeper into the addiction part of it, that was difficult to deal with for not just me, but the other band members and, and everybody involved in the, in the organization, it was, the crew. I mean, you guys, you guys knew it was, it was a point where is this show going to happen, right? We had to cancel a series of shows in Alaska and Hawaii. I remember because we couldn't find them for two weeks and, and yeah. people had already bought tickets and it was a difficult decision, but the band made that decision. And we all, I remember they went on MTV and I got them. Um, we said, look, we're, we're canceling these shows. We're going to refund everybody's tickets and we're going to pay all the crew because and we went crew, back and did that Alaska show. If you remember, Yes. Yeah. We made those shows up, but, but paying the crew was, was critical because you guys, you know, block that time out. You, you, you given up those hours and those days and expect to be compensated and, and the show doesn't happen. What happens? You take a hit. No, you guys should be paid. So we paid everybody off. And actually we, at that point we made Scott pay. We said, look, it was your thing that caused this to happen. And, and, and these are some of the costs. And he, you know, he he was vehemently well. His 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 lawyers <laughs> were opposed to that for a while, but I think at the end of the day, he realized it was the right thing to do. And 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 the other guys in the band were like, "Why should we pay for this?" It's as if we said, "Hey, we, we're not going to show up for this, but you guys take care of the money." It's like, no, if you didn't show up for it, that should be on you. And yeah. there was a point where he. Uh, he made an agreement with everybody and, and, and he, and he worked that stuff off. And um, yeah, those times were difficult situationally. Um, and, and, and he had a, he had a, he had an addiction problem. It was, there's no, no secret to that. It was very hard to deal with that. And uh, I, I, eventually I think that's what led to the band becoming, you know, really, really hard to work with and, and, and kind of broke them apart. It was, it was it, it's such talent there and, and such, ability and uh, and to see it like end up like that was was really sad i remember it really affecting robert the most he was really starting to just have a he was getting so stressed out over everything so it's hard yeah yeah i i, I, I don't 
I, I would say Robert to me was always the most emotionally connected. You know, he, he was very connected with his emotions and yeah. And he was also probably the closest to Scott. He and Scott had more time together, I think than anybody else in the band um, in those early days, especially. And uh, yeah, he was, he was definitely hurt by it. I think all of us were at some point, but he took it especially to heart and it's hard. It's hard when you, when you've started together and you've built something and you know one of the partners is not showing up it, it's yeah. i don't know how else to say it and it's uh you know there could have been a lot more there and and you see bands like pearl jams are probably the best example they just hung in there right yeah there's been a couple changes in, in personnel but for the most part that band is still together just because and i see even the chili peppers right i we grew up with the chili peppers in la and the longevity of that band is is kudos to them i mean that just being there for 30 years you know that pays off at the end of the day you've built something and it gets bigger absolutely in those last years the early years the scaling happens at a much slower rate but once you have a certain amount of scale the scaling happens faster the more you've been around and, and i think you see that now with the chili peppers in particular but uh i saw them last year and I was blown away. Probably the best performance I've ever seen them do. It was at SoFi here in LA. And, um, you know, I, again, remember seeing them at Fenders and, and, and small clubs in LA when they were a funk band. And, um, and to see Anthony in particular, that focused and that intense at this age and at this many years gone by, it was, it was really nice to see that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I love hearing that. That's great. Yeah. All right, well, let's do one more. Let's try and end this on a high note. Let me try and find <laughs> something that I think you'll really enjoy. And uh, I'll think about I it. I enjoyed a lot of this, Joel. What are you talking about? This is great. Well, that was my last question. When we do the last one, I'll ask you, what was your favorite band? Who would you want to listen to next? But let's do one more, and we'll have right. an outro. So let's find that one, and we'll do one more. Okay. <laughs> Hey, the podcast is over. What are you still doing here? Well, while you're here, like and subscribe. Thanks. <laughs>